All right, thanks so much, Jonathan. Really appreciate it. And uh, thanks everyone for joining today. Uh, great to finally have a chance to get out here a little bit and, and talk about the operator with you guys. Um, you know, especially the 4.3 release. As Jonathan uh, alluded to here, you know, this was a really big release for the operator team. You know, lots of great new features and functionality. You know, we've incorporated a lot of feedback, you know, and just really a lot overall to be excited about. So great to just have a chance here to, uh, to demonstrate a couple of these new features to you. Um, like Jonathan mentioned at the beginning, you know, really the, the idea here is to demonstrate, you know, some of these features, you know, with some live examples. So I, you know, I'm going to just jump over to, oops, I do have one slide here for our first topic to kind of just set the stage and uh, then we'll just dump it or jump right into um, an actual example of, of how this works in a running Kubernetes cluster I have locally. Uh, so the first topic here today is custom cluster configuration. Um, and more specifically, what we're going to be talking about here is how you customize your PostgreSQL and Petroni configuration settings um, once, your once your cluster has been bootstrapped and fully deployed. Um, I did want to clarify that point there, that really what we're going to be talking about is customizing these things post-cluster creation. Um, for quite some time now, um, the operator has provided the ability when you're initially bootstrapping your cluster, uh, to provide it with a set of custom configuration files that will basically um, be the, the initial baseline set of configuration for your cluster. That's done using a config map um, and some of the built-in flags we have for you know, things like our command line utility. And I did want to clarify that process hasn't changed. You, know, you still bootstrap and create your clusters um, like you always have, including how you apply custom configuration. Um, what has changed you know, is once your cluster is up and running out there for the rest of its life cycle, you know, how you then modify and tweak your, your Postgres and Petroni configuration settings from there on out. You know, that's effectively what we've overhauled in the 4.3 4 release. Um, and this is based on a lot of feedback we re received since introducing Petroni um, back in version 4.2. You know, we, we were told that um, you know, a lot of the feedback we got were some of the mechanisms that Petroni built in for, for managing and um, updating configuration weren't exactly user friendly. Um, so we really overhauled um, that portion of our system you know, to hopefully really streamline um, you know, and make um, cluster configuration or at least your Postgres configuration, I should say, um, a lot simpler and a lot more, more streamlined. So I'm not going to read through the slide here because we're going to basically touch on these different things, um, you know, as we step through an example here. So I'm going to kind of just jump right over into a live example here um, and just show you how um, some of this cu custom cluster configuration um, works. So I'll walk through a, a quick example. Okay, so running in a local cluster I have here on my machine. This is just a local Kubernetes cluster. I bootstrap locally. I have this um, cluster called Conf Cluster, um, and it's a straightforward cluster. You know, you can see here I just ran a PGO show command, um, and we can see that it, it consists of a primary and two replicas. Uh, so what we're going to do is just demonstrate a couple examples of changing some configuration, some Postgres configuration, within this within this cluster. Okay, so first and foremost, where is configuration stored? Um, and as you likely saw in that intro slide there, there's a config map where we've essentially consolidated um, all of our configuration um, for, for your cluster. I um, mean, I guess one important piece to mention, you know, when we talk um, configuration and Petroni, um, there's really two flavors of configuration we're talking about, right? Petroni has this concept of a distributed configuration store, this central um, configuration store where you can store configuration settings that are applied you know, to your cluster as a whole. They're applied to your primary and every replica uniformly, right? So when you make a change to the DCS, Petroni goes and applies that same configuration setting everywhere. But there are also certain um, settings you can configure on a per instance basis, right? So if you wanna reach into your primary or specific replica and tune certain Postgres settings individually, you can do that at a local level. So there's really those two flavors configuration, right? That centralized concept of configuration in the DCS, and then those local configuration settings um, per instance. Um, now, I do want to mention there are some caveats and some rules around those settings as set forth by Petroni, right? Um, you know, there are certain Postgres settings when you're setting up an HA cluster that have to be uniform across 
the entire cluster. Um, and as a result, Petroni does enforce that certain settings do have to be set via the DCS so they can be kept uniform you know, across the entire cluster. Uh, so I did just want to mention that real quick because you know, for anyone who might not be familiar with some of the rules around Petroni and its configuration settings, um, it's worth checking out their docs because essentially anything you see there it's gonna to apply to how we apply configuration here. Um, and that goes down to not only some of those rules about what settings can be set where, but you know the configuration settings we're using, the format that configuration is stored, this YAML format you're gonna see, that's all just pure Petroni configuration at, at the end of the day. Okay, so what we've done here, um, you know, like I had mentioned in the slide, it's consolidated all our configuration um, with this change into a single location. And every cluster you create, and that's what I'm showing here, you're going to now see there's a config map created with a that's named with your cluster name and then this PGHA config suffix. Um, so if we look in this config map, so I'm just going to describe it real quick. And what we're going to see here is a bunch of different, different YAML configuration files. Um, so if I scroll up here, you can just see, you know, there's a bunch of these different, different YAML configuration files. And what you're actually seeing here are Petroni configuration files. So again, we're not reinventing the wheel here. This is the basically the, the standard Petroni YAML configuration format you're used to seeing with, with Petroni. And like we said, there's those different flavors of configuration, right? There's a DCS, that centralized configuration store, and then there's your per instance configuration. Well, all of those things are reflected here in this config map. You know, so for instance, we can see that there's our DCS config. You know, this is these are the configuration settings that are applied cluster wide. Um, but of course, you know, this cluster consisted of a primary and two replicas, right? So if we scroll down here, we'll see we also see these config settings with a local dash config suffix. Well, these are our local config settings. So here we can see the settings. You know, the local settings for my primary, for instance. This is my current primary in the cluster. And then I have one for each of my replicas. And there's my other one. So again, all my configuration, you know, whether it's DCS configuration or local per instance configuration um, is now effectively consolidated into this one config map. Um, so what do you need to do if you want to change a configuration setting? Well, really, it's as simple as just updating this config map. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the Kubernetes command line here to, to do that um, using just a kubectl edit command. I'm going to edit this config map, so that's going to bring it up in an editor. And any change or any setting I want to change, whether it's a local you know, setting for a specific instance or a DCS setting, I just come in here and I change that setting you know, within the context of these YAML configuration files. Um, so really any, you know, the Petroni settings you're familiar with and you want to change some Postgres Petroni setting, whatever it might be, you just come in here and change it. And as soon as you change it, it's going to be applied to your cluster. Uh, so let's just show an example of that. So let's say we want to update our max connection setting um, across every instance within the cluster. And this is actually one of those settings that Petroni forces to be set through the DCS, so it has to be uniform across all instances within the cluster. So let's go ahead and change that to 300. So I'm just going to go make that change and save this. As soon as I do that, um, the operator is going to detect that there was a change to this config map, and it's going to apply that configuration change. Um, in this example, it's going to apply it to the DCS, right? Because it was the DCS configuration um, that we changed. So just to show that, what I'm going to do here is just reach into the primary pod that's running and just uh, um, print out the output of the PostgreSQL.com file. Um, and we can see here our max connections have been updated to 300, right? So that configuration setting we just made has been applied. Um, now, there is one other thing I wanted to show here that's really pertinent to um, you know, configuration changes, right? Because certain configuration changes in Postgres require a restart. So you have to restart the database. Um, well, one of the things we did with the 4.3 release, specifically with 4.3.1, was introduce a restart command into our own PGO client. Um, so now directly from the operator command line utility, you can restart nodes in your cluster. Um, and you can also see which nodes are pending a restart. So what I'm going to do here real quick is just run this PGO restart command with a query flag. 
And what that's going to do is reach out to, you know, all the instances of my cluster um, and pr print back some information. What I'm really interested in here, though, is what's over on the right, and that's this pending restart column. You know, because after we made that max connections change, right, we expect we're going to now have to restart every node um, or every instance within our cluster. And that's what this query command is showing me, that there's a pending restart start now for my primary in each replica in the cluster. So what if I want to go ahead and restart everything? Well, one option is to just run EGO restart conf cluster. And what that's going to do it's just restart every instance with, within the cluster individually. So we'll just give that a second to run. There we go. So what that should have done behind the scenes is basically gone through and restarted each individual instance. So um, sometimes there's a slight delay. So hopefully everything's been restarted here. Okay, great. So now when we query again, we can see that pending restart column shows false, right? We've restarted everything. Well, let's go ahead and make one more change, but this time I'm just going to change a local setting. So what I'm going to do here, instead of changing something through the DCS, I'm just going to go change on my primary um, the shared buffer setting. I'm going to bump that up to 256. Go ahead and save that. So this time, right, just changing one specific setting for one specific instance in the cluster, in this case, the primary. So what's going to happen as soon as I made that change, the operator is going to detect that and apply that setting to the primary. So now if I query again, this time we can see there's a pending restart only on conf cluster, right? Only on our primary, which is what we expect. So what we can do this time is, thanks to this target flag that's included in our restart command, we can pick and choose what instance we want to restart, right? So we don't always have to restart everything. So in this case, I'm just going to restart this one specific instance. So let's go ahead and make that change. And that should have restarted just the primary. So if I just query one more time here, now we can see our pending, um, we can see our pending restart flag is now false across the board. And if I one last time go look at you know, my PostgreSQL.com file, you can see that it was updated to 256 minutes here. So, cool. Well, I think that basically wraps up what I wanted to show for the custom configuration example. Again, just wanted to dive in here and kind of just show you where you can find all your new configuration settings. Um, you know, with this change, they're all consolidated into that one config map and just show you how, you know, how you can then modify those settings um, as, as you see fit. And it's really as simple as just updating that config map. And now thanks to this restart command, you can also execute your restarts, you know, directly from the PGO uh, command line utility as well.